Assalamu alaikum, koi meri awaaz sun raha hai? Good evening and a very warm welcome to each one of you present here. Okay, first of all, what IEEE is? Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, world's largest professional organization committed to the advancement of technological innovation and excellence to benefit all of community. This association has developed thousands of standards to provide a basis for regulation and remove barriers for development. It is designed to serve professionals in both in all aspects of electrical and computing fields and related areas of science and technology that underlie modern civilization. Interesting fact is that IEEE has a community of 4,20,000 members from all professions, including students, doctors, engineers, and professionals, and 5 million IEEE Explore content. Okay. IEEE has more than 40 societies to engage people on their own. Some societies are IEEE Aerospace and Electronic Systems Society, IEEE Antennas and Propagation Society, IEEE Circuits and Systems Society, IEEE Components, Packaging and Manufacturing Technology Society. Okay, so here is our program, IEEE Potential Development Webinar Series, Prior Time to Start a New Life. The main purpose of this webinar series is to engage maximum people with this fruitful and healthy activity in this pandemic situation. There are interesting topics with great speakers and we will spend some good time together. Okay, so here is our series timeline. We have total 10 webinars with two bonus sessions on different work themes like mental well-being, research methodology, personal development, sustainable development and coherent national research agenda in Pakistan, find your inner skills and start making money, value of entrepreneurship, study of COVID-19 from the perspective of control system, personal branding, if you don't find it, then create it. The last one is time management. These webinars are done and four more are to come. Okay, 140 people attended our first webinar for mental health by Mariam Rashi via Facebook and the web. 151 people attended our second webinar on research methodology by Dr. G. S. Javed. 110 people attended our third webinar on personal development by Mariam Rahman. 103 people attended our fourth webinar on sustainable development and Coherent and National Research Agenda in Pakistan by Naveed Ahmad Unal. 180 people attended our fifth webinar on Find Your Inner Skills and Start Making Money by Aisha Tabassum. 101 people attended our sixth webinar on Value of Entrepreneurship by Muhammad El Dalal. Okay, so today's speaker is Mr. Ulame Musfa Abu from University Technology Petronas, Malaysia. And he will talk on study of COVID-19 from the perspective of control system. Mr. Ghulame Musfa Abru has done bachelor's of electrical engineering from Hamdard University, Karachi, Sindh, Pakistan in 2015. Later, he did his master's of engineering in control and automation from Sir Sayyid University of Engineering and Technology. Karachi, Sin, Pakistan in 2019. With his main research interest in the mathematical modeling and control design with unmodeled dynamics and exogenous disturbances, he is coming up with this topic titled as Study of COVID-19 from the Perspective of Control System. Mr. Abru is currently pursuing his doctoral studies at the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering University Technology Petronas 
Malaysia on graduate assistantship. Okay, so here we have an activity for you during the webinar. So what you need to do is you need to follow these instructions. Take a screenshot of the webinar or take a selfie with the webinar. Share your experience on your Facebook or Instagram and mention us at these Facebook and Insta ID. An additional certificate and special shout out on our Insta account. Hand over to Mr. Gulame Mustafa. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum to everyone. If uh, I'm uh, quite audible to the audience kindly, let me know. Uh, everyone can hear, huh? We can hear you. You please start now. Okay. So let me share the screen first. So is it visible to you, the all audience, huh? If it's visible, then I may start, huh? Hamza? Yes, uh, your screen is visible. Can you please okay. start? Uh, I start with the name of uh, Allah Almighty, the ever compassionate and merciful. Uh, as you know, that uh, since uh, this uh, uh, COVID 19 uh, coronavirus immune disease that uh, took place uh, in December 19, the first case arrived in uh, 2019 by the end of December. And uh, this is how the mobility of people is going around the globe and due to that now it has been uh, one of the serious issues nowadays for around the world so uh, as far as uh, my qualifications are concerned i'm not uh, a medical student or uh, have expertise in medical but though i try to go for this topic coronavirus and uh, it's uh, modeling because i think that being a researcher one should go and understand uh, various models uh, in front of uh, uh, which are basically you know uh, coming in front of him and uh, one should try to put his engineering or her engineering to resolve the issues of the society so uh, defining the word engineer is someone who always go for the alternatives a person who is engaged with the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, he always tries something that is, you know, uh, favorable for the humankind. And same is the goal of IEEE. So keeping this particular scenario, I just went for this particular topic that is COVID-19 in the light of control systems. Control systems is one of the subjects that is always, you know, uh, people are learning in their undergrad studies uh, especially the electrical and mechanical stream students they are going through it and uh, even after their undergrad studies if someone is going to pursue their masters in the same field like control and automation or mathematical modeling they are uh, uh, taking care of this particular subject so I just uh, went through that how we can model the COVID-19 and uh, this particular disease model so that we can predict our tomorrow that what will be the conditions in coming future. So starting from that, uh, I just uh, go for the basic uh, slide uh, that is uh, my introduction. And uh, 
March. Yes. So uh, I have I have been pursuing as uh, I'm really grateful to Hamza and all the team who introduced me to this particular platform to present my idea. I have been pursuing my PhD in the electrical department, specifically the area as control systems. And previously I have done masters of engineering from Sir Sayyid University. Uh, and before that I was also uh, did my uh, bachelor's from Hamdad University, Karachi. The research interests that I have at this moment are mathematical modeling, control design, in study of under actuated systems, computer vision, control, and internet of robotic things, the most emerging topics. And really, it's very difficult to be updated in this current scenario. And apart from that, I have been indulged in uh, the IEEE activities also. So, without wasting time, just uh, going to the first slide that is flattening the curve. If you can see, this is the particular model of coronavirus. And uh, if you can see on X axis, we have the number of cases. And on, uh, uh, sorry, Y axis, we have the number of cases. And on the X axis, we have time since first case. And you can see the dotted line that is the healthcare system capacity of uh, individual country. So this virus is very much uh, contagious, you know. So everyone uh, should be in their, uh, in their rooms and in their uh, jurisdictions right now. Or when the lockdown has the WHO is basically lockdown it will be getting multiplied. So uh, the healthcare facility is a particular level hai. Agar usse upar, agar Hamara Ejo curve Chalajata, so we will be short of uh, uh, the medical facilities or her, it would be bringing embrolio to our society. So, this is a simple model. A bacha bacha joe, watchkal is model ko joe, wo genre. Hai. And uh, okay, I'll be strongly following the English language. Okay, I was thinking that perhaps uh, people may understand the Urdu. Okay, so. If you can see the particular model that is uh, on X axis, we have time since first case and the number of cases. So it's, it's a, usually a model that is quite famous in front of us. But uh, moving ahead, if we see what are the control actions nowadays that are being prescribed right now, we have to wear masks, we have to wash our hands, and we have uh, the we have to keep distance of one meter in between and uh, almost all the foreign travel has been stopped. So consider these measures as a control actions. The previous one was a model. And the second one, I consider them as a control actions as our topic of presentation is related to how to model COVID-19 in terms of uh, control design. So being a engineering, uh, person i have no medical degrees again i would say but yet i try to uh, create an interest among the people that yes we should go for such things that we can propose because you know all the way around the whole globe people have proposed several control models and all epidemiological models but yet they are failed to predict the next month so this is because of the imperfect things so in order to create the interest among the audience, especially the people who are from science, technology, engineering, mathematics, I just went for this particular topic because it's that most trending thing. So consider this particular control actions as a, this particular measures as a control actions. So if we abstract the whole uh, model or whole uh, control diagram, as we can see, this is an open loop system. I hope uh, several people will be aware of this thing. I just uh, go superficial that uh, control system in which you don't have any sort of feedback. You don't have any uh, sensor deployed in your system, which gives you the data continuously without sensor. The system is open loop system. And if you can see, this is the set point. Uh, I'll discuss later on what would be the set, set point of this open loop system. This is our control actions, let's assume. 
and this will actuate the curve of your COVID-19 graph. So if you increase these control actions, obviously this curve will go down. But how to know that our control actions are going very fine? So for that, we ha must have a feedback system that can measure the output of uh, COVID-19, whether the graph is going upward or not. So our controller at this moment, as this is open loop system, it depends on a good epidemiological model, which is a complex one, and it would have surely some time delays. Why? Because you know all this thing that uh, COVID-19 is not a disease that uh, uh, comes or shows symptoms in a few seconds. It requires uh, more than 15 days or 14 days. So this is particular thing that is a time delay in a system. So one cannot uh, accommodate that time delay. And uh, in open loop system, and this would be one of the constraints. So assuming that our, uh, in control study, we assume that our system should be linearized. And over here, if we see the dynamics of COVID-19, which will surely be discussed in the upcoming slides, it's a non-linear uh, system. And first we have to linearize it, or we have to propose such controller that can uh, stabilize it. So it does not deal with unstable system. And yes, able to react for noise and disturbances. What sort of disturbances in real case of COVID-19 are concerned? Let's assume that government has imposed the lockdown movement, but, uh, and in order to get a proper outcome over here, but suddenly people are not abiding in some of the jurisdictions. So this is something that is the disturbance in the input. So disturbance in the system. And due to this disturb disturbance, you know, maybe your COVID-19 uh, graph may disturb and this can be uh, inducted over here. So uh, coming over the next slide, which is a closed loop feedback system. So this is something that is basically a uh, model based. Uh, have, uh, many of the people have heard about model reference adaptive control. The model reference adaptive control is that we uh, make a generalized model of uh, COVID-19 over here and we just correlate the behavior among the both things. So if you can see, we have a set point over here that yes, we want our, let us assume our population is 200. So we set a point over 200, okay? So 200 will be, a, is a numerical value. How it will behave, I'll discuss this later on in our coming slides when we will discuss the model in terms of ordinary differential equations. So when we just put a numerical value, it will stimuli our controller. And the, the stimulation of this controller will go upward. And over here, we have model-based controller, which is basically sensing the values from the outback, uh, the outcome, the output, which is basically the model behavior that how many people are infected, how many people are exposed, how many people are suspects, and how many people are dead in some of the models now. Remember one thing that over till now, there are thousands of COVID-19 models that have been proposed. And uh, there are also in this particular presentation, we are going to discuss the top five trending models, which are recommended by one of the fine uh, medical uh, references. So we would be discussing those particular models, okay? So in this particular diagram, you can see that how we can control our COVID-19 with respect to a controller. So this can be the PID. If we consider it as a linearized model, you, we can put simply a PID over here and feedback, no need to uh, put adder over here. But if you are going for a model-based reference uh, adaptive controller or slide mode control design, then you have to uh, somehow change the architecture of your controller over here. But anyhow, what is our objective? Our objective is to supply a controlled input so that our COVID-19 can be uh, of a simple, you know, reduced curve, at least below the healthcare system capacity. So now discussing the main postulates, why, why I propose model-based controller, because it is, has the capability to stabilize the system much more than other controllers like SMC. 
because it is nowadays the trending controller and it it, it is assumed in our uh, it is believed in our control system society that uh, a model reference adaptive control is the fastest controller if it is designed in somehow in proper manner it compensates the uncertainties what are the uncertainties uh, in our system the uncertainties may be uh, related to um, what we say the uh, this immune system of a person you know and uh, in different uh, jurisdictions or in different places, the immune system is quite different. Uh, one is affected uh, uh, much faster than other. So these are the uncertainties. Noise and disturbance, I have already in introduced you that in with a very simple example that if government is going to impose a lockdown, but still people are surrounding as we have an example of Italy. So, and due to this, you have a noise and disturbance. So this controller has a capability to reject those disturbance. And obviously, the time delays that can damage your performance because this is uh, this is something that is you know uh, uh, time, uh, time delays can be catered by model uh, model reference adaptive control. So I think that there are uh, some questions also. Uh, which are coming uh, side by side if i can uh, uh, tackle those questions also simultaneously uh, from where i can open this okay uh, just uh, let me complete the slide then i'll be taking one by one the questions and will answer you about each and everything so the leading module, mo mo uh, models of COVID-19 quoted by uh, New York Times is that there are several models that can predict, you know, in the last few weeks, uh, we have all become quite familiar with the models that are proposed. And, uh, but anyhow, uh, in, if you are going to uh, go for a literature survey about these coronavirus models, then someone is going to provide the limitations at anyhow. They are providing the limitations of one model over another, which means that every model is not a perfect one. And this is the beauty of control system that even imperfect, I repeat, even an imperfect model can be tackled and can be handled properly and uh, using a particular control system. So, this is uh, one of the news that I want to share you of New York Times, in which they have uh, shared uh, these uh, particular uh, models. These are the five models in which the peak value of death is being indicated. And this is X axis on which the months are basically quoted. Someone has quoted from MIT, someone has quoted from any one of the University of Columbia. And all the models are basically indicating separate uh, peak values for one place, which is something that is uh, uh, visible to everyone. And someone is very uh, like me, if I'm going to see five models for one purpose and I'll say, okay, there are five models. So on which we have to rely on, which we have to follow the things. So now, one of the research areas for COVID-19 is to model it properly so that we may have at least the curve less than our health safety capacity so that we can survive at least in this. I would like to quote over here uh, the scenario of Malaysia. Over here, uh, there is a fact that uh, both countries got the same case on same day, 26th of February, and both countries have introduced uh, the Malaysia and Pakistan. Both introduced the lockdown on the very first day. And that was uh, most probably 18th of March. But if you see the cases in between Pakistan and uh, the Malaysia, they are separate. So how it can be possible? So there are some uncertainties and there are some disturbances also. The uncertainties may be the immune system, and the disturbance may be that over here, the lockdown is uh, followed properly, but in uh, Pakistan or somewhere else, the people, you know, because we all countries, the Asian countries are somehow 
weak in terms of economy. So people are getting outside of their homes, the labor community. So that is somehow the disturbances. You cannot, after all, human is a social animal. And without society, we cannot, uh, we would never been in this situation to sit in a room for a long period talking no one. So this is something that is uh, that is uh, countered in uncertainty either or in uh, disturbances. And one more thing that is quite uh, uh, shaking and due to these three things, let me complete. The third thing is the time delays because COVID-19 is something that does not show the symptoms directly. So due to these three things, what I believe the modeling of COVID-19 has not been done properly. So in terms of control engineering, I think that there should be a control system that should regulate it. It's, it's, it's a completely a study to provide students that yes, you can model either COVID-19, you can model any prey or uh, predator model, you can model even human body, you can model even any sort of economical system through control system. So this is something that will create an interest, I believe, in the uh, STEM students who are belonging to science, technology, and engineering and mathematics. So moving ahead, we have, uh, uh, this is one of the model. Uh, this is one of the model that is basically agent-based model. In this, you can see that uh, the people are, uh, how much they are interacted with each another and due to this you know the curve is uh, increasing and decreasing you know the sick people are basically denoted with the color of orange and the blue color this mid, mid light blue color is basically healthy people and the pink one is the uh, recovered people you see that how the healthy people are victimized by just coming in contact with those people who are in, in uh, sick people. So this was on, also one model that produced or that predict the thing that yes, our situation of next month will change in this manner. If we see the next model, it's quite interesting because if you can see, we have five things to discuss over here in this particular model. One is suspectable, Second is a red color that is exposed. How many people are exposed? Well, the green is infected and the purple is recovered. And orange is the death. So it's a model that is known as SEIRD or sometimes they ignored the D factor, which is death. And they just introduced that as a share model, which is suspectable, exposed and infected in R. So why they have considered, because later on, just after a few slides, I'll be discussing the ordinary differential equations. So they are basically discussing the graph in a manner that blue is a suspectable people. So if the exposed people, if there would be no lockdown, people are going to cinemas, to their shopping malls, to universities, they will come in contact with each other and the moment will arrive when everyone will be affected and no one will be available over there to whom we can say that he is healthy or she is healthy. So this is the model from which uh, one can also uh, drive the uh, situation of uh, next month. So these, uh, if we can see uh, for at this moment, I have uh, obsoleted uh, two things to get you better understand about the model. Uh, that is exposed factor and uh, the second thing uh, the first thing is uh, last thing is the death rate so if you can see we have three factors ds upon dt which is the rate of change of suspects di upon dt which is the rate of change of infected people and dr upon dt which is data, uh, the rate of change of uh, recovered people so i should place uh, the comma over here because i have another thing to discuss that is this r it should be noted that this r and this r are not same this is the rate of change of uh, recovered people and this is the reproductive uh, rate so this is the problem in covid 19 the reproductive rate is basically depending upon the 
two things. One is you are uh, suspected uh, the transmission rate uh, and the suspected rate. So these are the two things on which reproductive rate depends on. So if you can model these equations, so whether in MATLAB or in Simulink, you can just produce the same graph and you can uh, make it as a subsystem and you can place any sort of controller to model it properly. I again repeat that it, this particular presentation is just to create an interest that how in terms of uh, uh, control systems, we can take a general problem and we can model it into uh, in, in, in the light of control system. So you can just uh, in make a model using these particular equation and simulating and see the behavior. Of course, there would be some imperfect things like disturbance and other things. So this is the model. I have taken the example of uh, Pakistan. This is uh, the model that is basically uh, based on statistics. So first one was agent based, second one was compartmental based, and third one is parameter fit model. This is the model that is basically based on perhaps uh, the Internet of Things uh, acquiring the data from different hospitals and different jurisdictions and placing into the database and showing the statistics uh, accordingly. And on the statistics, maybe uh, they go for deductive or inductive type of uh, you know, themes to uh, get know about the situation. So this theme is also being followed in different countries. So now uh, the most popular models uh, so far, these are the most popular models which have been introduced uh, for different countries. Obviously, uh, people started uh, doing research from China, obviously, and they have um, uh, done a my, uh, mind blowing job in this thing. And they have uh, reduced the cases over, over there as far as the uh, proper uh, resources are concerned, we can see the cases are going down in China and Italy also trying its uh, level best. And even in Asia, we have India, who is basically abiding the same module, uh, same model technique that is suspectable, exposed and infrared, uh, sorry, infected and recovered modeling technique with regression technique to compute the future of their states. But no one has gone through the modeling of each city, which is still an area of research for the people like us that we can go and uh, uh, conduct uh, a simulation based on the cities or the regions. They have just gone for uh, uh, entire country. Very few, like you can see the paper number six, that is mathematical decay and sectional, uh, the exponential, uh, model based on uh, serial intervals and somewhere I saw the cross-sectional uh, model also. So this particular thing is based on Wuhan particularly. And if you can see over here, the Hubei is one of the region of China where they have imposed the same modeling, which is SAISPR, which has also included one I, and that is basically isolated and the uh, T is basically something that is uh, uh, a variable that is uh, belonging to a person who are of uh, older age. So they have monitored those people also in their country. So now we will just go back to our uh, model that we have uh, proposed uh, in our MATLAB. So let me um, open uh, this. These are the two files that I made. Uh, if you can see, uh, these are the pre-infected people. Uh, the rate of, uh, uh, if you can see, uh, okay, uh, how many people can see this? Okay, no one. It means, let me, uh, uh, well. So 
your presentation is not visible. Yes, I have closed it because I want to show you the symbolic now. How many people can see this MATLAB code in front of you? Please just message, okay. You can see, okay. So this is the MATLAB uh, thing, you know, just uh, again, an example, you can, uh, you all would be provided this file and uh, this file is very uh, amazing to learn the things, to get the things started. So if you can see, we have, uh, uh, there are many things that we can discuss uh, later on, but uh, as far as COVID-19 is concerned, there are several things which cannot be covered in whole webinar. So at this moment, I have just placed an arbitrary values. These are the parameters that I have placed. This is the pre-infected value, that is 5.2. We can put it a six, we can put it seven. This is the, uh, uh, the value that is uh, normally considered for a person who are basically uh, infected with a normal rate. It means before COVID-19, what was the rate of uh, pre-infected people? And this is the frequency, which is one upon uh, pre-infected. So this would be the frequency before COVID-19. So all the comments are provided over here. It should be noted that the particular example is taken from uh, one of the uh, uh, data that is available on the worldometer and uh, uh, we have taken the example of Russia. Uh, the population of Russia as per 2020 is this one. So N is the number of population and you have, uh, I have mentioned the uh, R naught or R that is reproductive rate, which is basically our relation. So I have mentioned an equation. Uh, if someone has a strong expertise on MATLAB, uh, he or she can understand uh, the um, uh, so that the, in our MATLAB files, we always go for built-in functions to whom we call user-defined functions. So this is uh, the T span uh, for one year, that is zero to one. Uh, one is the one day. So from just zero to one, one day, it will be just moving forward two, three, four, up to 365 days. And these are the parameters of SIER which I have just included and I'll be calling it into this, this line. You can see we have a call Y not over here, T span and all the parameters. And there's a function that I made using uh, the label OD function sample, which I will also sh let you know. But before that we have used a built-in command of MATLAB that OD45. OD45 is, a differential equation solver. So this code will be given to you and uh, you can play it and you can uh, change the things as per your city also. Uh, if uh, someone is in Lahore, someone in, is in uh, uh, city Sikandar of Malaysia is, or someone is in London, uh, he or she can put the data and get the curves. So this, this particular code is very nominal. So uh, just, over here, you can see we have just used the plotting command. So this is the main part where we have introduced the differential equations. So now we are going to uh, run it properly, okay? So control A, F9. Oh, let's see the behavior. My our system is somehow slow. So if you have any questions uh, in the meanwhile, you can ask uh, so that uh, I can take it uh, simultaneously, uh, you can write uh, the things. Uh, you can write things uh, related. Okay, it showed me the error. Okay, let me see. Webinar. So anyone has questions so far? Is 
so was one question here yes yes as, as you told all about the covid 19 from the perspective of control system uh, so can you please tell us a little bit idea that uh, when covid 19 will end uh, that's a uh, very difficult question because you know uh, this is not a uh, uh in as far as the who is concerned i'll discuss the both aspects uh, the uh, the reasoning aspect and the uh, aspect that is going on nowadays with respect to who now so as far as the who is concerned they are just uh, giving the feed for messages that yes maybe the covid 19 may last for this whole year till december over here in in, in malaysia uh, the malaysian government has stopped all the international travel so over here no one uh, no any international student is coming neither any uh, worker or any sort of person is now no there is no more travel and if you ask me in terms of uh, engineering and in terms of uh, research the research says that if uh, we can be successful in reducing uh, the contagious thing. If we, we can uh, go for a little sacrifice and, and put um, ourselves, because you know, the reproductive rate the, in the slides I have mentioned R is equals to beta over uh, psi. So that particular thing is basically depending upon how we expose ourselves to the environment right now the most dangerous thing is our hands so if we are going outside and we are in contact with the people so if any one of the person is basically affected it will definitely affect the people around the globe now as i was as, uh, reading one of the research a research paper and the research paper it has been said that if an airbus if one person is affected and uh, is cover is of COVID-19 positive, it can affect at least 30 people in the Airbus. So, and if it uh, and if you put one single guy affected by COVID-19 and he is in cruise uh, system and the uh, the cruise ship, the whole uh, the sea ship, it can affect more than 180 people in that particular ship. So at this moment, what my perception and my study says is that it can be only finished if we give sacrifice and be restricted in our homes, which is quite difficult. If you can see, uh, I'm sitting right now in UTP hostel. And at this moment, uh, my state, Prague, has zero case. And that is something that is, uh, I'm really thankful to God Almighty that today we don't have any cases in Prague state. We have the cases in other states, but we don't have pra in cases in Prague. Why? Because Prague is not a tourist country, a tourist place, number one. Number two, we always uh, over here, I have witnessed this thing that they have provided each and everything on the at the doors. So this is one thing that people uh, were remain in their homes and this put something that uh, reduces the effect of corona so at this moment without uh, vaccine i think that this is the only uh, solution at this moment that we give sacrifice and we remain uh, we give a better dynamic of our life we do not uh, interact with the people in the may we were interacting before we are going to because you know in this world it has been said that everything is permanent except change. So this this is the change that we have to follow for some time. And uh, we should be hopeful that one day it will, you know, there are so many countries where uh, it has been reduced. So I hope that I have answered the question. So yes, sir. If, well, at this moment, if you can see the graph, the graph is quite, uh, uh interesting if you can see over here i have considered the suspectable pre-infectious and infectious and recovered uh, let it be enlarged okay 
So everyone is seeing the graph, I uh, think. And if you can see, this is the compartmental model, which is uh, which is basically predicted for Russia, in which you can see the blue line is suspectable. The orange is pre-infectious, the yellow is infectious. So what is the difference between infectious and pre-infectious? Pre-infections means the person who put in the category where they have normal flu and cough. So, okay, they were normal cough and the normal flu is okay. But when they were going through the uh, particular test of COVID-19, they were regarded the infectious people and they were uh, suddenly increasing. So, the infected rate, if you can see the slides, uh, the, in the slides I mentioned that these four ordinary differential equations are strongly coupled. In engineering or in mathematics, we say coupled means one factor is depending on second. Second factor is depending on third. So exposed, infected, and uh, the uh, recovered and the death rate also. These are interrelated. Why we have countered the death? Because in many uh, traditions and the religious activity, whenever death occur, people gather. When people gather, they again become a source of spreading the coronavirus. So this is the particular graph when the COVID-19 is spreading and the lockdown is not introduced. But when we introduce the lockdown, let's see, I have another uh, code for you guys. That is, so WOP means without any policy of lockdown, you can see. and. WP is with policy. So here they have changed the policy. So what is the policy? I assume that by putting the policy, they have reduced the beta factor, the transmission rate. Let us assume the beta rate is now is half. So it means the exposed rate of the people is half. So what would it impact on the equation? So let's see, I would uh, run this model. And in the meanwhile, if the graph appears in front of uh, me, then we would start. Okay. So, so this is this is the thing that is basically producing the graphs. If you compare these slides, and this code will be given to you, and you can see. There is a difference in this graph and the previous one. Because if you can see the values of the people who are affected in this graph and the previous one, they are differ. They would be they would differ from each other. So this is the particular coronavirus model uh, and we have modeled it in terms of compartmental strategy. What you have to do is you have to just go and save this. Now I'm coming towards the programming thing. All the people who are interested in the pro programming that how we can make it this code into subsystem, we just select all the things and there's a command that uh, converts the system into Simulink. If I open the Simulink and uh, it will, I think, take some time, okay. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, command window, okay. Just writing over here, Simulink. So, when you open the Simulink, there is a one block that is known as MATLAB function. So by clicking it, you can just browse the this particular file, which is of wp.m. When you click it, that particular block will be following all the characteristics which are already introduced in this coding. So afterwards, you can just go for it and you can practice it with different types of controllers. At this moment, I just want to introduce you that yes, we can uh, model the coronavirus because people have done this thing in terms of differential equations. So now coming towards the uh, same thing, I, I think that it will take time. If it will be open, I'll just introduce you, but now let me go for uh, the presentation. I'll stop the sharing thing. And then I'll again go for my slides. Uh, where are the slides?
Okay. So, what was my aim, uh, my dear fellows? I think that being a student of control system, I'm pursuing the PhD over here. I thought to contribute. So, how you people can contribute being an engineering student, I would like to draw your attention towards that point also. So if you can see, uh, I have uh, mentioned a slide that discusses the equations. So over here, if you can see, this R is equals to beta upon this psi, okay? So if you are able to, uh, if you are able to compute this reproductive rate, you can save the people out there in Pakistan, in Malaysia, in India, whatever the country you belong to, you can save it. How? There is a platform of IEEE that is IEEE Humanitarian Act Activities uh, Committee and a Special Interest Group, where they have uh, a grant for COVID-19 up to 50,000 or 5,000, perhaps I don't know the exact amount. I have applied for that and I have proposed one uh, project. What is that project? I want to introduce you that project. I have proposed a disinfectant gate, but that gate is not the same as you are seeing in front of the people and seeing very commonly used in various areas. That is based on Internet of Things. Why? Because in that particular gate, we have one station that is known as IMU, uh, that is Image Processing, Image measurement Unit. And the second station, we have TMU, means Temperature measurement Unit. Whenever a person is going inside, it will just show his face. His face will be captured. He is whether a, a registered citizen of that country or not. And what is the travel history of that guy? We can know that. Secondly, when it will come in front of a, temp, a contactless temperature sensor, it will detect the temperature. And when he will or she will cross from that and disinfectant gate, she or he will be spray getting the spray of disinfectants. So now we will make sure that the remains of coronavirus will not be anymore with her or him while entering to any uh, public spot. Now, why this gate is not uh, similar to other gates? Because it's an IoT. What is the advantage of IoT at this moment is that we are requiring the data of exposed people and the suspect people simultaneously. Because if the temperature is high, it is suspect. And if it's the temperature is low, it means it's not suspect. It's just exposed. So we are getting the data of two variables that is exposed and suspect. And the other two variables are the inf uh, infected uh, and uh, the recovered one. The infected and recovered one data can be processed through hospital. If there is a city, let's suppose there is a city, London, and in London, there are several hospitals dedicated for coronavirus patients. So they are continuously sending the data into virtual pool that we have uh, uh, dash number of uh, uh, X number of uh, uh, infected people and we have X number of uh, recovered people. So we are getting the those two data in one virtual pool. So disinfectant gate provides you the data of two things in exposed and suspects. Hospitals are providing the data of two more things which is infected and recovered. So by this thing, you can compute and predict through any uh, learning algorithm, whether it is uh, the any sort of machine algorithm, you can go and apply it and you can predict the next month. And this particular disinfectant gate is cost cheaper, you know, it's having not that much cost, which we are spending on very high level disinfectant sprays making people wait all the time when they are going outside. So this is something that is not of any use. We are basically concerned with these four variables, export, exposed, infected, recovered, and the uh, suspects. So four variables are very concerned thing for COVID-19 because these are strongly coupled with each other as terms uh, in terms of mathematics and they can 
give birth to reproductive number so before if you can opt if someone after this webinar may contact me and ask me i'll share you some of the research papers if someone can contribute i can show, share him that how initially was the reproductive rate and just after the lockdown here in malaysia on 18th march the reproductive number is going down and uh, gradually now the situation comparatively right now is under control and people are you know well satisfied with the government and all the management though the economy uh, declines but still the people are happy with the circumstances so now if we go uh, uh our last uh, but not the least slide that is the summary at this moment uh uh, audience, I just uh, want to just play some of the simulations also, but uh, at this moment, I just want that this would be the beginner level for you and I'll share you the files also to Mohammed Hamza. And I believe that you will work out on these two models and uh, with primary and classical controls, which is PID. So, uh, afterwards, uh, I'll uh, introduce, uh, I'll request Hamza to arrange uh, another uh, webinar in which I'll just uh, model, you know, uh, uh, introduce the simulation regarding the control things, how PID is implemented on this thing, how slide mode control is implementing on this thing, and how model predictive control on things. Because this is something that was counted in general. If I can see the schedule of other webinars, in those webinars, all were the general topics. And uh, this was the only topic that was quite technical in terms of engineering. So I think that uh, to uh, have a related audience regarding the engineering, especially the people who are fond of control systems, I can introduce them in the second version of this uh, webinar that how we model it with respect to predictive control theory and how we a model with them with the classical or robust control theory. So with this, uh, our this presentation comes to its an end. If someone has any sort of question, he or she can ask to me. Uh, the main motive of this uh, workshop or this webinar was to uh, give you an idea about that how we can model the systems and how we can go for any sort of process or uh, disease model that we can model it in terms of control systems now so i can also write my email so that one can pursue me yes if there is any question he or she may ask me okay sir thank you so much sir Sir, no, problem. no problem. I just want to mention my email. Hello, thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you so. Hello. Yes. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for being lovely audience and uh, to take care of yourself. Especially, you have to being a mathematician and being a person who used to think about mathematics. I should uh, say you that you should cover the things in terms of mathematics now so better to take care of uh, the four variables take care thank you Hey, our next webinar will be on Tuesday, 19th of May, 2020 at 4 p.m. Vokas Hassan, an internet entrepreneur, will talk on personal branding. Vokas Hassan is an internet entrepreneur and a motivational speaker with two online brands, 30 Day Experiment and Australia Yours. His blogs receive a combined monthly readership of 1 lakh plus 
from 150 countries while his popular instagram program on personal development has over 5 million views and a following of 30000 plus people Vokas is a gold medalist graduate from the national university of singapore with a double major in engineering he was also a liberal arts scholar at nus our side of academics he was the president of asian north 2011-2013 and C. White Student Entrepreneurship Society with presence in 60 universities. For his leadership achievements, Vokas was given the prestigious Distinguished Leadership Award at NUS. Since mid-2017, he has been actively training city planners on using technology to take advantage of the future science revolution. He has trained 300 plus ministry representative from 25 countries and also given talks at the national university of singapore university of leeds england university of Aberdeen, scotland and korean advanced institute of science and technology south korea if you want to grow on instagram and other social media platforms if you want to get thousands of followers in just few months then this session will be for you we highly recommend all of you to must attend this session and brand ourselves on social media. Thank you so much for your attention. We will email e-certificates to you within one or two working days. If you have any query, feel free to ask. Tomorrow, it timing will it will changes.